Head over to warchant.com or on3.com from the team's drop-down menu at the top of the screen or the upper left corner if you're on mobile. Select teams, scroll down to Florida State, and then select Warchant. There, you'll see the limited offer for one year for one dollar. Tap or click, choose Florida State from the drop-down, annual or monthly, enter your billing info and hit subscribe. That's it. One dollar for a year of Warchant.com, the ultimate deal for the ultimate fan from the ultimate Semmel sports source, Warchant.com. What is up, everybody? That is Irish O'Fell, managing editor of Warchant.com, the ultimate Semmel sports source. I'm Aslan Hudjavandi, director of digital media. Join us at Warchant.com for only one dollar for an entire year. Go to Warchant.com. It's on the front page. You can't miss it. One dollar. Sign up for an entire year of access. Thumbs up watching us here on YouTube. We appreciate it. Day two of full pads here after a day off. On Wednesday, Ayer, we saw them get back at it. Uh, the offensive line continues to be a work in progress, but we do see the depth kind of coming into play on a day like this, especially when it comes to freshmen, which is something that Mike Norvell talked about after practice. Yeah, and they do have uh, you know some guys that they like the depth. Sometimes you don't necessarily want it to be called into the kind of action it was called into. They, they had to move some young guys up because they had a couple guys go down. Mike Norvell said it didn't seem to be anything serious. But they're taking precautions. I mean, it's the second week of preseason camp, so there's no reason to kind of make guys through play, th play, play through things if they don't need to. But it gave an opportunity for some of the young offensive linemen. And, and you know, Ju Julian Armella was a much hyped offensive lineman coming out of high school. He's gotten a lot of really good reps. Uh, Kaniah Charlton's a guy that's gotten a lot of uh, early reps. That um, it's just good to see again. He, he came in here in the spring. Armello was not here in the spring, um, but you know Charlton got to you know learn some things in the spring. We're seeing him applying it now, and Armello is just a really talented guy, man. And, and the other thing I like about him, and we he was heard, in the weight room in the spring when he wasn't here. Yes. Armello was in the weight room back, back home during the spring. He is a physically developed young guy, mm -hmm. and he also has some what for. You know, mm -hmm. he he kind of will get into. He's not backing down. Jared Verse and some of the other mm -hmm. older defensive ends have gone at him and kind of tried him as a young guy, mm -hmm. and he's responded each time. Yeah. Offensively, uh, during seven on seven, there was a nice little, uh, they had a little bit of a lull, but then, you know, Keyshawn Helton makes this beautiful diving catch during seven on seven, kind of really lifted the spirits of Mike Norbell. And then they go into a little bit of a more red zone kind of a look, I guess. But then Micah Pitt with two great touchdown catches on back to back plays. Johnny Wilson also in the corner of the end zone catches it. Uh, Corey asked Mike Norbell after practice, you know, was this you know, maybe one of the better days you've seen from Micah? And, him developing is, is probably a really big part of this offense, we think, this coming season, right? Like, what do you think happens there? Because, you know, when we did our roundtable a few days ago, I think you and I and maybe Jeff and Corey, and we all kind of said we were kind of hoping to see a little bit more from Micah Pittman in the first yeah. week. And then today he has that day. And, uh, you know, you go back to the spring. I don't know if we were overly impressed the first you know week of practice or so, mm -hmm. but as the spring went on, he really kind of took over. What do you think? Is it just a mentality thing, or do you think he just kind of, when the pads get on, he gets more physical? I mean, I'm hoping it's it's, it's a – Part of that is mainly, yeah, it's, it's getting back into the whole sort of flow things. I mean, listen, he was in and out of you know the lineup last season playing yeah. at Oregon. I think him now maybe getting acclimated to being full time again and kind of finding his niche, if you will. I mean, because they they are rotating guys in all the time and it's trying to kind of find maybe right. a comfortable level. But uh, again, man, that, that that came on the spark of a. They were kind of in a bit of a lull for maybe a period or two offensively, and then Keyshawn makes a huge catch, and then Mike Pittman goes bam, bam, and then there was a nice catch that he also had towards the uh, coming on the other side of the field where it was like an underneath. Actually, we can't talk too much about details, huh. but. He made a really good play. Right. I mean, I don't think I don't know how many other receivers on the team would have been able to make that kind of catch and then you know move up field quick enough to score on that. So really encouraged to see that happen because that needs to ha that definitely needs to happen. Uh, and his progress wasn't because the cornerbacks are slouching by any means. I mean, that, that's a that's a position group that's really starting to kind of come into focus. And we keep talking about depth with the offensive line, but man, cornerback is there's a lot of things to like back there. Yeah, and uh, you know, Mario Cooper's the returning starter, the one returning starter at corner. So we do expect him to still be in that position. He's had a good camp, uh, but there is a lot of competition. Renardo Green, I thought, had a good practice today, and he's a guy that is a redshirt junior, has played a lot of football here, has moved back and forth between corner and safety, is now steady at corner, and has played pretty well. Jarian Jones has played well. Azaria Thomas had a couple of really nice plays today. The freshman who just continues to impress every day that you're out there. Uh, he really just kind of catches your eye. Um, but they Sam McCall had a nice Sam, PBU. Yeah. He got a lot of praise from Adam Fuller and Norvell. Yeah. And he had been a little bit quiet maybe the last couple of days, mm -hmm. but Sam McCall. And then, I mean, you, you also have, uh, you know, like I say, I don't know if I mentioned Greedy Vance is a guy who we hadn't seen much in preseason camp but came back today. And he's just a real physical guy. The thing I was wondering with Greedy Vance is, like,
like, are they going to call it? Because he's going to have his hands on the yeah. receiver, and it's just whether or not the referees are going to let him play like that because he is a physical cornerback. I think he was highly penalized last year, but he also had more pass breakups than like the top five defensive right. backs from Florida State combined. So you kind of got to take the good with the bad with that. Uh, anything else catch your eye when we're talking? I mean, everyone wants to know about quarterbacks, obviously, but you know they were a little bit limited in what they could do with what they were shuffling around the offensive line. Right. But I thought, you know, I thought Tate and you know Jordan both went out there and made some plays when they were, the opportunity presented itself. So. Yeah, and then you know you also saw some chippiness. Um, you know, again uh, we've talked about before. Jared Verse likes to talk. He's going to try to get under offensive linemen skin and uh, maybe some other players at other positions, and he does that pretty successfully. Uh, but you have guys that are not backing down. I mean, they're challenging him. Uh, nothing gets crazy. There's no awful fights or anything like that. But you can see guys are are kind of getting chippy. They have a scrimmage this Saturday. Yeah. It'll be the first uh, real chance to to play in a game situation inside the stadium. And Mike Norvell said today that you know that's you know you don't want every play. He said every play is important. But it's a little bit different when you go in the stadium. And so a lot of these guys, it's going to be the first time of these transfers, this huge transfer class, some of these freshmen who are trying to compete for playing time, they're going to get a chance to go in that stadium and see what they can do. And that's going to be a big part of as they kind of hone in this depth chart. Yeah, really interesting to see how those transfers do because we heard from Fabian Lovett when we asked him about how different is it going against, you know, even the second teamers this year versus last year. He talked about, man, you know, just the top of it. We've got so many new guys. He pointed out Demetri Emanuel being a guy that's a much improved from what he faced last year. Jason Turntine, who came from South Carolina. And then we spoke to Deuce Span today after practice. Yes. He's another guy that they're finding different ways to get him the ball. And when they get the ball in his hand, he makes plays. And that was a guy coming out of spring, felt like, all right, you know, he's going to make like a quasi red shirt, if you will, right. to develop. But uh, his red shirt was the months of, I guess, you know, April, May, and June because he's, he's ready to go now. He really, like. he really is. And if you watch the interview, he's not the most talkative guy in the world. But I'm telling you, he is. Lakewood been, Education, that's Jeff Cameron's <laughs> alma mater. He has been, uh, he just seems a little nervous. I'm sure, you know, being in Illinois, he probably didn't get a lot of media, yeah, especially yeah. when he was redshirting at quarterback. But he said, you know, he made, the, he made the move from quarterback to receiver back at Illinois. He had some doubts about it. He didn't know if that was the right thing. He played quarterback his whole life. But, man, he has, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's showed a lot of ability. They're going to have to figure out ways to get him the football. He can fly, big target. Um, and he's come so far from the spring. I admit he's like, I really didn't know the playbook in spring. Right. I mean, just imagine going out there and you, you, you don't really know what you're doing. Now he does. We're seeing it and we're yeah. seeing it. It's very encouraging. So, um, again, we got a full wrap here on YouTube. We also have the uh, podcast, Jeff Cameron Show, 1 to 3 o'clock. Uh, and then we'll be back out here Friday as they get their final practice in before their first scrimmage. Head over to warchant.com. Corey's got a write up. We've got all sorts of stuff going on. If you've ever well, thought about joining what's us, what's it cost? One American dollar. One American dollar. If you ever thought about it, like, uh, you know, I guess 100 bucks is a lot of money. Um, but for one buck, you can try it out for a whole entire year. You can go on the forums. You can mix it up with us. Corey's in there. Corey's replying to threads, everybody. Tom Lang, Tom Lang did an AMA yesterday. Yeah, Ask like, me Reddit. anything. It's amazing. Uh, join us. It would be awesome. Man. We really appreciate it if you all could come on over. Hit that thumbs up on the way out. For Irish Ophel, I'm Alison Hunchavandy. Thanks for watching. Head over to Warchant.com or On3.com from the team's drop-down menu at the top of the screen or the upper left corner if you're on mobile. Select Teams, scroll down to Florida State, and then select Warchant. There, you'll see the limited offer for one year for one dollar. Tap or click, choose Florida State from the drop-down, annual or monthly, enter your billing info and hit subscribe. That's it. One dollar for a year of Warchant.com, the ultimate deal for the ultimate fan from the Ultimate Semmel Sports Source. Warchant.com.